Hey guys, this is Banks Garcia. Welcome back to my channel. Okay, so before anything else, I would like to greet you, all of you, a happy, happy new year. As you all know, this is my first ever video for the year 2023. So I am hoping that everyone had a wonderful and meaningful time with their loved ones, their families, friends, and relatives during the holidays. Pasensya na kung medyo late na itong vlog ko kasi I've been extremely busy studying for my Life in the UK exam, which actually I have already passed. <laughs> I am getting a step closer to, you know, completing my plans with my husband. Kasi kami ng husband ko, well, we as a family, we love traveling around the world. So it's been such a hassle thing for me to always, you know, apply for a visa whenever we go somewhere. Kasi sila, my husband ko and my two kids, they have British passports. And that means they don't need any visa whenever they go to other countries. So ako, the goal is to apply for my citizenship next year. So right now, the life in the UK test is for me to get the settlement visa. By having that as well, it will make it easier for us to getting the house that we really want here in the UK. So it will also help. And then the next step would be for me is to pass my driving exam, which is going to be next month. So please pray for me. This is going to be my second time because I failed the first one. My goodness. <laughs> I think now I'm more confident with the uh, different roads here in the UK and I'm getting more used to the roundabouts, which where I had failed last time. So I made sure that I focused on that this time. And yeah, I think this time I am going to pass it, God willing. Anyway, so as I was planning different contents for my channel, I realized that I haven't really given you a proper introduction of myself when I started started this channel. For this episode, I'd like to give you something different. Like a reintroduction of myself, but through giving you a little trivia about myself. Uh, yeah, of course, you know that I'm Banks Garcia, but you don't really know the real Valerie Garcia. I want to connect with you guys on a deeper level. Because I am planning to create more content about my personal experiences, my journey in life, about my personal growth. I can delve deeper into topics like love, relationships, now marriage and motherhood. A lot of things. And also depression because I've been through depression as well in 2021. So I would like to delve deeper into these topics and share with you some pieces of advice, my learnings. I am hoping that it would give you an enlightenment. It would give you an inspiration and and a proper guidance. So by the end of this video, feel free to throw me any questions. Ask me anything. Just put them in the comment section and then I will try my best to answer each one of them. I will give you a shout out along with the question that you have asked me. By the way, I hope you like my hair nga pala. Dahil sariling sikap lang ito. <laughs> yes, believe it or not, it's a DIY haircut at home, which I have done, I think, two weeks ago. So I just got so fed up with my split ends, so I just decided to cut it off. <laughs> Eh, matagal ko na talaga inaasam masam na itry yung DIY haircut since pandemic days. I just never had the courage to do it. And so, nung nainis ako sa split ends ko, I took that opportunity. <laughs> and to my surprise, it was easier than I thought. Sana palabin vlog ko yun. Pero to be honest, it was less than 5 minutes. So, it's gonna be like too short for the vlog as well. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad I did it. And guess what? Nakatipid ako ng 52 pounds. <laughs> Napakamahal ng haircut or kahit trim ng dito sa UK. So I'm just really glad that I chose to be wise. Diba? Nakatipid ako. And I also colored my hair. And you know naman, I know how to color my hair kasi nag-vlog na ako about it before. So I just did the same thing again. I'm back to my old ways kasi after being ultra blonde last year, nasira talaga yung hair ko. Anyway, napakadaldal ko. I might forget to give you the trivia about myself. Let me start with the basic ones first. So number one, uh, my birth name is Valerie Garcia. And uh, as you know, my married name is Valerie Garcia Birchmore. Because my husband is half British, half Filipino. He was born and raised here in the UK. Hence, I moved here. Started a family with him. But 
Did you know that my nickname at home is Ava? Yan ang tawag sa akin ng parents ko, ng siblings ko, ng mga relatives ko, both mother's side and father's side. Pero pagdating sa school, ang tawag sa akin Val, Valerie. Yes, my best friends call me Val as well. But my childhood best friends, meron kaming term of endearment, which is best. So we call each other best and then our nickname. So best Jack, best Bang, best Tim, best Trish, but best Rachel. Those are my my five best friends nga pala. Feel free to call me Val as well if you want para naman close tayo. Parang magbarkada lang tayo habang pinapanood ninyo ito. As that is my goal to get connect with you guys deeper. So feel free ha na maging kabarkada niyo ako. I'm more approachable than you think. Mukha lang siguro akong mataray minsan or maarte. May mga nagsasabi mukha akong maarte or mataray. Pero I think if you talk to my closest friends, none of them would say that about me. I mean, I wouldn't have best friends for nearly, what, 26 years? Kung ganun ang pagkatao ko. I don't think so. Yes, hindi po ako ganun. I am totally opposite the characters that I portray as bangsters. <laughs> anyway, yeah, feel free to call me Val. Ava if you want. But I think Val would be much better kasi yung best friends ko nga, they call me Val. Number two, I think most of you know that I am from Davao City. I am born and raised in Davao. So in Davao City, mixed ang salita. May Tagalog at Bisaya. Kabalo kong Bisaya. <laughs> Dili kong malibak. Bisag unsa, isultin ninyo sa ako ah. Pero teka lang, mas makasabot ko kaysa makasulte. Kasi yung mom ko, she's originally from Nueva Ecija. So Tagalog na Tagalog. And then my papa is from Bicol na lumaki sa Davao. They've never spoken in Bisaya to me and my my siblings ever. Siguro ngayon, imagine natututo na yung mom ko. But she's like 70 years old. It took her years. Kasi marami ng Tagalog sa Davao. So pag nagtagalog ka, tatagalog yun kanila. Unlike sa Cebu, mas majority nagtasalta ng Bisaya sa Cebu. So I find that it's deeper yung Bisaya sa Cebu. It's called common, Bisaya sa Davao and Cebuano but mas malalim, mas mahirap intindihin yung sa Cebu. So, kung nasa Cebu ako, minsan I'd rather speak in English mas naiintindihan nila ako. Pero when I was in Cebu in 2013 I was in Cebu a lot. I had a lot of shows there as well. I was able to adapt the, the language. Kasi kahit saan ako, ganun ako, may, madali ako mag-adapt kung saan mo ako ilagay. Siguro pag tumira ako sa Batangas, makukuha ko rin yung Batanggan yung accent. So, I can easily adjust like, it's just how my brain works. So, it's just so quick. Pagdating sa mga ganyan, madali ako mag-adjust, accept and adjust. So, sa mga Bisaya Dira, pag nakita ninyo ako, Bisayain ninyo ako, try ninyo, test niyo ako, makasabot lagi ko, di lagi ko malibak ko eh. <laughs> Plano ko nga, iruan din ng Bisaya, si Amelia and um, Isabella, when they're old enough. Tagalog muna, and then Bisaya. So, one day, mag-vlog ako about my kids speaking in Bisaya. Just wait for it. Number four, did you know that I am such a Foodie! Yes! Hindi lang talaga halata. Pero, oh my gosh, matakaw po talaga ako. <laughs> Medyo nakakayang aminin. Pero, that's the truth. If you see me and my husband, if you see my plate and his plate, I just eat exactly as much as he does. Look at my husband. He's like, he's six foot. So, he requires more food. I'm such a petite girl. So, who would have thought that I could eat as much as him? So, yun po talaga ang totoo. Matakaw ako. And, bit for nahihiya ako. <laughs> pero, I mean, now, I love food. I should be proud of of that. I love to cook as well, so it just makes sense that I love food. Number five, it's about me being a painter. Pero I promise you, my connection siya. Kasi, I'm a painter and because of me and my husband being foodies, grabe ang sweet tooth namin. We love eating cakes and chocolates. So, ang plano ko, when we finally have bought the house that we really love, I'm planning to paint a portrait of me and my husband, but an overweight version. I'm gonna give it a title, Fat Souls. Abangan niyo yan. I've been painting in the Philippines, and my medium is acrylic on canvas. I'm into impressionism. Gusto ko na realism. My instructor was really a more of a combination of impressionism and realism pala. Yun yung forte ng instructor ko. And so, ang di ko pa try is abstract and mixed media. I want to be more experimental when I get back into painting. So right now, I haven't painted for years. I Believe it or not, I haven't painted since 2017. So since I became pregnant with Amelia and then I moved here in the UK because I don't have my own painting room here. Wala rin akong yaya. Wala kaming helper dito. So it's quite tricky to paint whenever there are kids running around behind you and just grabbing all of your tools, diba? So I am just waiting for the the right time kasi nga lilipat kami ng house and my husband promised me that he's gonna build me a my own painting room. I'm the type of person who needs proper seclusion. I don't know with other 
artists. Pero ako kasi, I can't paint with loads of distractions around me. I just find it so difficult to concentrate. So, I, I can't. I have to be patient. Nakakatina talaga ako. I really want to, but I have to be patient. Ayaw kasi nung napuputol-putol yung work ko. But actually, Isabella kasi just started attending preschool. Pero one day pa lang siya. Once a week pa lang siya. So, tiba, It's really tricky for me. Siguro, if she's in school na, like Amelia, like the whole day, that will give me a lot of time. And also, that would be the time when we already have the, the house that um, we're gonna move into. Slowly, I will get back my old self who is pursuing my passion and all that. Maybe acting as well. So, one day, one by one. <laughs> Since we were talking about kids, ideally, did you know that I would really love to have five kids? Yes. Five talagang gusto ko. But realistically, two or three lang. Kasi mahirap talaga. Mahirap ang buhay dito sa UK na walang yaya. Unlike, kung siguro na sa Philippines kami, naka-base, then I would gladly have five kids. Kasi napakamura lang magkaroon ng yaya sa Philippines eh. Dito, it's like, it's crazy expensive. I mean, even the most richest people that I know, I've never seen any helpers there. Glad that I, we don't have a helper in some way. Kasi, nakatutok talaga ako sa kids ko. And I just realized that when you're a truly hands-on parent, you just have the peace of mind that you can really instill your values and principles in your children's minds. So, kasi kapag pinaubaya mo lang yan sa yaya, syempre, they might truly care about your children, but it's different when it's like real love. When you nag is talagang mahal na mahal ka. I assume meron naman talaga mga yaya na may ganun na mahal talaga nila yung kanilang alaga like a real parent. But not everyone. It's really better if you raise your kids like hands-on. For me, I prefer it now. I can't imagine having a yaya anymore. So sabi ko nga, di ba? Two or three. We are thinking, well, masyadong ma-excite. Hindi pa kami sure. <laughs> Pero, we are thinking to have another one. We might. Kapag nandiyan na yung house namin. Yeah, we'll see and decide when everything's settled na. Okay, number eight. It's not so pleasant, but I think it's worth sharing. It's worth letting you know that I've had a miscarriage. I think two nga eh. I'm just not sure with the second one kasi. The first one, I'm not sure if, if it's a month already. I did the test and I've had like three positives. And then after a few days, nag negative na siya. And then I did feel a little bit of pain, sharp pain sa lower abdomen ko. And then parang nagkar na ako ng period ulit. It wasn't planned, but still, I got affected. But at the same time, I realized that kasi namin ng husband ko na hindi pa kami ready ulit. We're still trying to complete a lot of things right now, including the exams and the driving and all that. And then I'm gonna be driving my kids to school soon kapag nakuha ko na yung driving license ko. And then for the second one naman, it was just like naging parang period lang siya. Feeling ko, it was a miscarriage because I had like exactly the same symptoms that I've had with Amelia and Isabella and the first miscarriage. It's exactly the same feeling. Mas sure ako dun sa first miscarriage. So number nine, did you know that I was actually bullied in school? When I was 13 years old, I was bullied and not just the usual bullying, I was assaulted. I was physically attacked by five big girls. This was in Ateneo de Davao University. I've been studying in that school since, you know, preschool. Most of the girls, they've been in the same school with me since the same time that I've been in Ateneo. I really know their faces. I know their names already, but we've never been friends. These girls are actually big for their age, like tall. They were as tall as the seniors. So, nasa freshmen kami nun. They're part of this sorority. It's a bit weird talking about this again because I haven't talked about this for a long time. And usually when I talk about this before, I still feel emotional. But obviously, I've got and over it now. I mean, it's been many, many years. I was just 13 years old. We were all 13 years old. Here's the thing. Before I tell you more about the assault that I've done, here's the story behind it, which I have never shared with all of you before. You know that I've got my best friends, right? My five best friends that I've mentioned to you earlier. We were childhood friends na since we were 10 or 11 years old. To be honest, they know this naman. I haven't been that comfortable with my friendship with them. I never trusted them before. So when we were 13, I tried looking for other friends. At that time, there were a lot of new students. Since I felt a bit outcast in my childhood group of friends, I met this new classmate. Her name's Bea. Bea was so nice. She was so warm. She was like everything that you would want to see in a friend you would want to feel from a friend. Complimenting and all that, of course. Very flattering the new mga words and all that. I do remember her asking me to be her best friend. I won't forget that she asked me that and I thought it was like, oh, okay, I didn't realize that you have to ask someone 
to be your best friend, I thought it just happens. I thought it was weird and cute. Of course, I said yes. Kasi nga, di ba, I was having these issues with my childhood friends. Kala ko, blessing yun, na parang, oy, may bagong student, may bago akong friend, may bago akong best friend. Oh, wow, okay, I don't need them. I don't need my childhood best friends if they're always gonna make me feel like an outcast. I have this new best friend, Bea. So I always hung out with her every day. Most of the time, I was with her. I do remember introducing her to my mom. And my mom said, mag-ingat ka dyan. Meron akong kakaibang pakiramdam. I never listened to my mom. Moms always know best. This was way before the assault. Hung out with her, had a great time. I always had great times with her. You know those random days when someone just suddenly shares with you a gossip which you didn't ask for? Because one time I was waiting for my papa to pick me up from school. Another friend of mine just sat down with me. We were talking and talking and then suddenly it just came out. Like all of a sudden that this gossip. She said, oh, did you know blah, 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 blah. But it was shared with me. So what's the instant thing that you would do as a 13-year-old? You would share it with your best friend, right? Like, that's what you do. You talk about anything under the sun. So I shared this with my best friend, my so-called best friend. I trusted her. I told my best friend, I shared this story with my best friend, but not with my childhood best friends. Fast forward, I was attacked in my classroom. So recess time to, naalala ko. So most of the classmates are out. Here comes the sorority girls, the mean girls. The first thing they said was like, is it true that you said this? My initial reaction was like, yeah, that's true. That's true, I said it. I'm super honest kasi I would never deny. Yun nga yung problema sa akin, masyado akong honest. They attacked me. She grabbed my hair. She slapped me. She punched me on the arm. Some of them grabbed my blouse, my uniform. So some of the buttons fell off on the floor. So munti ka na akong mahubaran. Those are the things that I could remember. Because to be honest, I had a blackout. I thought thought it was like a nightmare. I couldn't believe that it was actually happening to me. This is like in a movie. <laughs> I couldn't really say anything. I couldn't really uh, defend myself because as a 13 year old, I felt guilty because I did say it. But little did they know, kasi akala nila, kinagkalat ko. We've been through a deliberation. We were taken to a deliberation room one by one and they've actually squeezed it out of me. They found out that I actually told this story just to one person. So itong sorority girls, itong mean girls, they they thought that I was spreading the rumor. So at that time, when they were confronting me, all I could think was, oh my god, I'm guilty. I'm, I've done a huge mistake. Pero, after the deliberation, after talking to my family and my friends, we all realized that, hey, we all do share personal stuff to our friends. We have that freedom, you know. But I never had the intention of spreading a rumor about this girl, about the leader of the gang. So yeah, that was their motive. They thought I'd spread a rumor about the leader of the gang. So we found found out that my so-called best friend used me as a bait to get into a sorority. So she wanted to be a part of that sorority. Kinamit niya ako. I was in such disbelief. I was extremely disappointed, super heartbroken. I should have listened to my mom. Actually, my childhood best friends also told me to be careful with her. I was just really desperate, I guess, to fill in those spaces that I have been feeling when I was with my childhood best friends. But this incident actually became a test for our friendship. You know what? The girl whom I trusted, whom I thought was my best friend, she was shocked. She never thought that it would go that far. So if there are good things that I have gotten from this experience, it's actually knowing who my real friends are. Actually, this is a blessing in disguise. Because imagine, if this hadn't happened to me, I wouldn't know who my real friends are. Yung real friends na yun, yun pala yung childhood best friends ko. So whilst they were attacking me, sumugod din sila. Although, it was a bit too late nung nakarating sa kanila yung balita. One concerned schoolmate actually approached them and told them what was going on in my classroom. And then they ran. Although they've done a lot of things already to me, they went there, pinagtanggol nila ako. I couldn't forget what they have done for me. And guess what? Nag cut sila ng class on that day with me just to help me go to my dad to our leather shop. At that time, kasi open pa yung shop namin and nandun lagi yung dad ko. So, pumunta kami doon. They told them what happened. I remember my dad calling my uncle kasi he was a lawyer. And then, my lola is actually a judge. So, puro mga lawyer, mga kamag-anak ko. So, ang una nilang ginawa is like, tawagan ng police. Gusto nila pa pick up yung mga 
girls and actually you know what i was so nice i was too kind i told them they're only young kids as well like me so they don't really know what they're doing so at that age ganun na ako mag-isip so there are two things that i have learned who my real friends are it taught me how to step up for myself taught me to defend myself since that time i promised myself that nobody ever is going to be stepping on me again nobody will ever step on my dignity ever again whenever someone is uh, like trying to harm my loved one i could get really defensive pag basta pag mahal ko pag mga kaibigan ko family ko yan grabe ako mag defend but because of what happened naging solid kami super solid kami that's why hindi rin ako ganun ka bitter dahil maraming mas maganda nangyari after i can say that i've got best friends for life so that's how we became stronger our friendship yeah maybe i should actually thank those girls those mean girls for doing that to me <laughs> actually i've already forgiven them like but i would never forget i could say that i'm going to be forever scarred but at the same time kasi dahil mas maganda yung nangyari after i've already forgiven them also bea yung tinuri kong best friend I know that you have tried to reach out to me years ago, but I guess I wasn't ready to forgive you yet. But if you're watching this video, then I have forgiven you. So you can now have the peace of mind that you've been looking for. You can let go that burden off your chest now, as I would. Kasi mas masarap sa pakiramdam kapag nagpatawad ka na. It has also developed my confidence. That experience led me to overcoming my shyness. See, a lot of good things happened to me. I think within the same year that I was assaulted, I, was, I also started modeling. So I started like modeling on the side. I was earning money on the side. Like not much money. Like small amount. Like 1.5 lang ata or 2,000. But that was such a big deal as a young girl. As a 13 year old. So that was 13. I started modeling at, at the age of 13 years old. I've also joined the pageant. I remember I had to tell them that I was 18 years old. But in fact, I was just 15. Actually, bawal nga yun eh. Pero I just did it for fun. I just wanted to overcome my shyness. I want to be on stage. May calling na ako. I just did did it for fun and I didn't know that I was gonna win kasi yung kalaban ko is Mutia ng Davo winner I remember pageant was called Miss Herway and it was a national competition so whoever is gonna win that pageant is gonna be sent to Manila to compete so I joined that pageant thinking that I'm not gonna win this and there's no way that I'm gonna win this Mutia ng Davo tong kalaban ko so it was just really purely for fun <laughs> I won the contest so it was such a, a big problem for me kasi nga illegal yung ginawa ko sorry guys <laughs> they thought that I was 18 years old and I had to like make loads of excuses that I can't go. I can't go to Manila. I mean, I'm an underage. I ended up not going. Since nandiyan na tayo sa mga joining of competitions, I joined Campus Idols. It's an inter-school competition which means I am competing with other representatives of different schools. I was representing Ateneo de Davao University. It was such a big pressure on me being the representative of Ateneo. Hawa ko yung pangalan ng school namin so ayaw ko talaga silang mapahiya. I really did my best. It was such a fun experience for me. It was like focus on acting, singing, and dancing all in one. So imagine, it was really honing me into the actress that I am today. Well, that I was. I haven't been acting for years now. Campus Idols was sponsored by Close Up and it was founded by Sir Gachi Gachalian, who actually passed away already I, two years ago, if I'm not mistaken. But I wasn't able to attend the funeral because, of course, I'm here in the UK. If I will have the chance to go to Davao City again, then I will surely try to visit Sir Gachi Gachalian's family and pay respects. Shane trains sa amin. Ako pala yung nanalo. By the way, I was the winner for the female category. So, alongside a male winner from Davo Doctors, I guess. We call each other partners. Evan Benedicto, if you're watching this, kamusta na partner? Miss na kita! <laughs> we had such a great time during the Campus Idols, di ba? And I'm glad, I'm glad I met you guys. And of course, Sir Gachi Gachalian, I'm thankful. And number 13, after winning that competition, I was led to my first job. My first job is a TV host for a Teen variety show. It's KSP, Kapamilya Sabado Party. It has this showtime kind of vibe, pero puro teenagers. I was a working student. Actually, every Friday in the afternoon and Saturdays in the morning, I had to go to ABS CBN Davao to rehearse some dance routines and then we perform before starting the hosting gig. And yeah, it was such a great time as well. <laughs> Sunod sunod yung mga pangyayari sa akin, sabi ko sa inyo, after nung nangyayari sa akin, ang daming mga good things na nangyayari. It all led me to these opportunities, I think. Instead of um, feeling depressed, I actually used that to fuel up my soul, to fuel up my confidence. I wanted to become a better person. I wanted to show them that I am not that meek 
girl anymore. And I'm gonna be someone who's very confident. Mukhang na sobra, napunta ako sa showbiz agad. <laughs> I was earning like 2,000 lang ata, 2,000 to 5, I can't remember anymore. All I could remember is that, wow, this is loads of money for my age. Like, I got the freedom, you know, like to buy anything that I wanted. I didn't even have to ask money from my parents and I thought it was amazing. And I continued doing it. The next thing I know, number 14, I was already an actress. Kasi napindan na ako sa Close Up to Fame. Close Up to Fame is a national model search. So, ako naman, from Davao, pinadala ako to Manila. And guess what? There were 52 contestants. Out of 52 contestants, there were like 5 who were from Davao, including me. Wow, ang gagaling ng mga taga Davao, in fairness. I'm a proud Davaoenyo. Proud kong bisaya. <laughs> Dun sa Close Up to Fame, I was a runner-up. We were called Famous Six. We were like winners already, kasi out of 52 contestants pa naman, we were only 6. I was a runner-up, but I was the only one who remained in the showbiz industry. One winner for the female category and one for the male. Actually, partners pala yun talaga. Couple, and then they're gonna have like a commercial of their own. So I never had that, but I actually met my manager. I became a youth ambassador in 2005. I met my first manager there, and then my manager let me audition for PBB and Let's Go. So Let's Go is my first ever show. Munti ka na ako mag PBB. Actually, kinausa pa ni Direct Lauren, and then he talked to my manager as well. And my manager told me that they found out that I've just joined the Close Up to Fame. So I can't really join another reality show after reality show. It's not allowed. The blessing in this guys, because I really wanted to choose Let's Go. Because in Let's Go, I don't have to compete anymore. My goodness, parang pure competition yung pinagdaanan ko. Give me a break. That's what I thought. So I wanted to have my own show, which I don't have to compete anymore. So dun po nagsimula yung name ko as Banks Garcia. Yung mga ibang tao na napanood ako sa Close Up to Fame, they knew that it was me. Half of my face was covered. My bangs was slanted like that. So may kita mo ng konti yung left eye ko. You can see my features here. So yung talaga nanood ng Close Up to Fame, they were recognized me. Naging consistent kami sa pagtakip ng mukha ko. <laughs> they wanted to keep the mystery there. So, that's the story. That's how I became Banks Garcia. Yung story naman behind the name Banks Garcia, as far as I could remember, Direct Bobot and the writers of Let's Go, they just decided on that name during my audition. Kasi nung nag-audition daw ako, I had bangs. And guess what? Rewind. Before ako nag-audition for Let's Go, I just finished the competition Close Up to Fame. And that's where they actually caught my bangs there. So blessing in this guys na naman na kinot nila yung hair ko sa Close Up to Fame kasi yun yung nagbigay ng idea kay Direct Bobot and the writers to call me Bangs Garcia. A very unique character name. We never expected to really stick on me. I never really planned this to be my screen name. <laughs> Naging Banks Garcia na lang ako nung sa next show ko, which is Palos, which was my biggest break. Kasi from youth sitcom, oh, nag-serious role na ako agad. Lastly, medyo dumidilim na. I'm not sure if you could notice the difference of the lighting, pero <laughs> bago dumilim at bago bumalik ang mga kids ko. There are a lot of things that I would want to share with you, pero siguro I think this could be a perfect ending. I would also like to share with you that I've been part of CAT. If I'm not mistaken, it's the abbreviation of Citizen Army training. Parang kong train for military, di ba? It's like part of curriculum of the fourth year level in every school. I don't know if, it, if it's still a thing now, pero during my time, it was a bit important. The reason I joined this kasi gusto kong patunayan dun sa mga tao nagsasabi um, in my school na maarte daw ako. Dahil siguro mahilig ako mag-ayos and all that. For me kasi, pag sinabi mong maarte, it's more of pretentious or hard to please. Yung reklamador, yung mahilig mag-complain sa kung ano-ano. I I'm totally the opposite of that. It's actually, yung mga maate, actually pet peeve ko yun. It's one of my pet peeves. So, naiinis ako kapag sa akin sinasabi yun. Kasi, you really don't know me. Kailo mo talaga ako, alam mo hindi ako maate. So, it would get into my nerve if we know each other and you still had the reason to say that when I know for myself that I didn't do anything for you to say that. So, I get annoyed. So, ever since before, sa high school, para dun sa mga taong hindi ko kilala, I wanna prove them wrong. So, I joined CAT. <laughs> I was a non commission officer but there was towards the end I was kind of like I don't know how I came up to be training some other cadets I can't remember anymore but all I could remember is that towards the end I had to train the other boys and I was their leader 
Who, anyone who made a mistake, I had to give them like 10 push-ups. I would ask them to do some 10 push-ups in front of me because they didn't know how to properly hold a rifle. Lahat na mga opposite ng kaartihan. Like, when we were eating, talagang ginugulo nila yung system naman. Like, pinapakain kami sa putik and all that. Tapos, pinapaligpit sa amin yung, yung mga putik sa corridors using our bare hands, walang kahit na anong tools or gloves. Lahat ng opposite talaga ng kaartihan. Kaya sabi ko, okay ha, sige, marte pala ako ha. Pakita ko sa inyo yung totoong Valerie Garcia. It was a fun experience. Nag-enjoy naman ako kahit na puro ako sunburn. Sobrang itim ko noon. Grabe, we were under the sun. Tapos, I remember there was also a time na sinagot ko yung isang officer kasi akala niya may makeup ako. To be honest, di naman ako masyado nag-makeup pa nung high school. High school days yun eh. Powder siguro and all that. Pero hindi na kahit powder, hindi ako oh, gumamit. I, I was so confident, I actually answered back to the officer and I said that, um, Sir, wala akong makeup. Sir, gusto niyo maghilamas pa ako sa harapan niyo. Sir! <laughs> and then nagtawanan lahat ng cadets kasi napaya yung officer <laughs> since it was a girl. But actually, naging friends na kami after that. Nagkita pa nga kami sa Manila. But it was funny to look back. Anyway, I guess if you summarize all of the learnings and the traits that I have acquired through the experiences through all of these years, I guess all of these experiences honed me into the strong, independent, career-driven, and resilient person that I am today. So lahat yan. Nakatulong sa kung sino man ako ngayon. I have no regrets. In fact, I am grateful for all of the experiences that I've had. To be honest, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Marami pa akong gusto i-share sa inyo. Marami pa. Believe me. I want you guys to know me as how my friends know me. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to ask me anything that you want. And I promise you that I'm gonna try my best to answer each one of them. Kahit paunti-unti in all of my future vlogs. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe.